Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru here. So this video you're about to see on YouTube is a free preview of my course on Timeleaf and the Spring Framework, how they work together. If you like what you see in this series, head over to my website at springframework.guru and you can learn more about the full course. Hey guys, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru. So in this module, we're gonna show you how to set up Spring MVC. I'm gonna step through it a little bit slowly. I don't know that how much experience you have with Spring MVC, but we're gonna set up a couple Spring MVC controllers that are gonna be used to render our time leave templates. So we'll create two different controllers, one for the index page, one for the product page, and then we'll set up those controllers to actually render in those templates. We're not gonna render in the templates just yet. This is just Spring configuration for those controllers and setting up the URL mappings and stuff like that to, to get these controllers happy within a Spring Spring MVC context. Okay, I'm jumping over to IntelliJ now, and this is the same project we looked at the end of the last coding exercise. And what I'm gonna do is come over here and create a, a new package And I like to keep my controllers in .controllers package. So I got guru.springframework.controllers. And now I'm going to add in a new Java class. And I'm going to call this index controller. Now you don't need to, to name your controllers something dash controller. And this is just a convention that I follow. You're, you can call it whatever you want. Any valid Java class name is going to work here. But by convention, I like to make sure that other coders that are going to be reading this know that I've created a, a controller. So it's just a, a little helpful visually, you know that it's a, a controller. So I'm going to add that to Git. Now to make this a controller in Spring, we use the controller annotation. So now this creates it as a Spring component and as a controller. We need one, one method here, in public method, it's going to return a string. And I'm going to call them get an index. I'm not going to take any parameters in. And we are going to do this as a request mapping. And I'm going to do a request mapping to the, the root index. And what we want to do is return a string here. And what's going to happen by convention is the Timeleaf template engine is going to look for a file in templates called index.html based on the prefix of index. So we don't have to say index.html and the Timeleaf template engine is going to figure that out but based on its configuration. Now we need to do the same thing for our product controller. So I'm going to create a new class here. So I've annotated the class with the controller annotation. And this time we're gonna do a get product. So similar functionality here. This one's gonna return back a string called product, which is gonna to link to the product.html time leaf template. Okay, that, that was the basic configuration we needed to do for Spring MVC. Now what's not included there is that the actual Timeleaf template engine configuration. We are utilizing Spring Boot and we are utilizing the sensible defaults of Spring Boot. So we didn't have to set up any of the Timeleaf templating engine stuff for the Spring framework. That's already being managed for us by Spring Boot. So all we did here is we set up the URL mappings, we created two controllers and then set up the proper mappings to go to the Timeleaf templates.